AEW Double or Nothing 2021 is now officially in the books, and man, frankly, what a hell of a show last night. Thanks for tuning in and listening. As always, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe on social media. Links in the description below. The thumbs up button. Share hashtag AEW, hashtag AEWDON for Double or Nothing. Hashtag Double or Nothing as well. Chat questions and comments. Super chat, super stickers. Always greatly appreciated. Now, I'm recording this the day after the show for a recap rather than before for a preview because, well, I actually did record on Saturday while the AEW Fan Fest was going on as they unveiled some new action figures, and we'll get more into those in a little bit. Uh, however, in the middle of my recording on Saturday to uh, go over what happened on Friday night with both WWE Friday Night SmackDown and the AEW Friday Night Dynamite that'll also take place again this upcoming week due to the NBA playoffs once more. Um, in the middle of that, my computer all of a sudden out of the blue just decided to restart an update on me. So unfortunately already being short on time and that having happened, I just figured, well, hell, I'll watch the pay-per-view. I'll sit down afterwards and record a little bit of a recap, but still talk about a little of uh, what I discussed in my preview that of course is nowhere to be found because even when it did recover it, there was nothing there. So um, here we are now, day after Double or Nothing, actually Memorial Day 2021, ending the long weekend as it's now known, as we'll technically enter June tomorrow, the same day this will be uploaded as well. So once more, thank you for tuning in and listening. Be sure to hit that red subscribe button, little notification bell next to it as well to stay up to date. And in a few weeks, we'll have another wrestling pay-per-view with NXT TakeOver In Your House, followed by WWE Hell in a Cell. Those will be Sundays, June the 13th and 20th, respectively. And then both AEW and the WWE will be getting back out on the road, touring once more in front of live fans, state-to-state here in the United States, as AEW will actually begin on July the 7th. Uh, And then the WWE will begin on July the 16th with Friday Night SmackDown, the Money in the Bank pay-per-view weekend, as Money in the Bank will then be two days from then, that Sunday, July the 18th. Uh, WWE also recently announced SummerSlam will be on a Saturday this year, Saturday, August the 21st. Um, However, today, AEW Dynamite with AEW Double or Nothing from last night with a recap as mentioned instead of a little bit of a preview uh, due to some technical difficulties but uh, we'll have time down the line to talk WWE so we'll save that for then but AEW also recently announced that they're going to be adding a second show side by side with Dynamite and it'll be AEW Rampage debuting Friday August the 13th on TNT at 10 p.m. Eastern Time following Friday Night Smackdown so Technically, what it was this past Friday and this upcoming Friday, Friday, June the 4th at 10 to midnight here on the East Coast, that's what Rampage will be uh, along with Dynamite on Wednesday nights from 8 to 10. But then uh, with AEW moving to TBS uh, effectively January of 2022, both shows will then be on TBS moving forward. Uh, And then AEW also announced last night during the Double or Nothing pay-per-view uh all out will be september the 5th which is a sunday that's a labor day weekend and then they went one further announcing full gear will be saturday november the 6th uh so chicago and st louis for both of those pay-per-views respectively uh wwe going to be hitting texas first off when they begin touring once more AEW with florida and texas as well uh so Over the course of the next few months, by the end of the calendar year, uh, I would assume that both of these companies uh, would have, at that point in time, uh, they will hit all of their uh, key major uh, markets, uh, all the uh, same cities that they go to uh, throughout the year, year in and year out. But uh, just keep an eye out for that, of course. I'm sure I'll be attending a few at some point in time, eventually, just a matter of when. But, um, yeah, as mentioned, AEW Double or Nothing. Uh, what a hell of a show last night, I thought. Um, arguably one of the best pay-per-views AEW's put out. 
Uh, I thought full gear, I think it was this past November, uh, on the road to this all out and full gear, um, that full gear was the best. I mean, double or nothing in its third year. It all started back in 2018 when they had all in. And then AEW then, of course, became a thing January, that new year of 2019. They have double or nothing as they went all in. Now we're going double or nothing and then all out. And then, of course, um, you have your beach breaks. You have your uh, fighter fest, fight for the fallen, uh, blood and guts now as well, uh, events throughout the year, uh, plus um, revolution and full gear. But then with this new TV deal, uh, that's an extension to what AEW already has with Warner Media. Uh, AEW will be adding uh, four more exclusive events throughout the year as well. So we'll see if that entails when the time rolls around. But um, excited for the return of live fans, of course. Last night they were sold out. Daly's Place in Jacksonville. Home of the Jags. Urban Meyer had a cameo during the stadium stampede match. Surprised Tim Tebow wasn't the mystery joker in the Casino Battle Royal, but he wasn't, unfortunately. We'll see if he makes the team or not come training camp and the preseason. Uh, but uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars did, in fact, select Trevor Lawrence, number one overall, last month with the number one overall pick in this year's 2021 NFL Draft. Um, I mean, Mike Tyson, along with Urban, uh, they had a spot a few weeks ago if I'm not mistaken, on Dynamite. Uh, AEW, with, of course, the Khan family being involved with... Uh, Sean Khan actually had a cameo last night, too, uh, in the uh, coaches' conference room, as it was just a cardboard cutout of them, with Jericho and MJF going back and forth with one another. And we'll get to that down the line here towards the end of this recording. So once more, thank you for tuning in and listening. But, um, of course, with the Khan family involvement and Tony running Rough Shop, in Northern Florida for all the wrestling with, of course, Cody and the Bucks and Kenny Omega and Jericho and everyone else involved. And, I mean, AEW has Dynamite. They have AEW Dark. They have AEW Dark Elevation now. And now they're going to be adding Rampage on Friday nights. And they brought in Mark Henry, the world's strongest man, uh, to do some uh, commentating for that. And I'm sure at some point in time, too, he'll get back in the ring along with uh, Paul White, of course, formerly known as The Big Show. Uh, was a little surprised they uh, made the announcement last night for uh, Mark Henry. Uh, just not surprised that, okay, he's in with AEW now. He's all elite. But, um, and, okay, during the pay-per-view, I mean, why wouldn't you go out and announce that he's going to have something to say, I guess, this Friday night on Dynamite uh, as well, addressing his future. Uh, but um, just wasn't expecting Mark Henry to, no offense to him, I mean, I think it's a excellent move, and it works for both sides, but with all the matches, all the uh, backstage interviews and promos we got, just wasn't expecting Tony Schiavone to introduce uh, Mark Henry as the newest member of AEW. Uh, you know, if it was going to be Mark Henry, okay, maybe in the Battle Royale, not just come out and get his uh, five seconds of fame for, uh, hey, I'm in AEW now, even though he's already Mark Henry, for God's sakes. Like, he's a household name. But I've said before, AEW needs to watch themselves with as many former WWE guys they're bringing into the company, and, oh, hence, they're is now a, another with Mark Henry and two uh, former big guys with him and show now in with the company too that, I mean, you look at it, AW lately at least, in my opinion, they've been lacking putting over some big guys. You know, whether that be Jake Hager, Wardlow, I mean, Powerhouse Will Hobbs, the list goes on and on. Well, now you have, you know, a few potential candidates for opponents to, you know, match them up against to get your own talent over that you said from day one that, you know, we're not going to be like any other company. We're going to be ourselves and 
well, I mean, I get it, but yeah, so um, I don't even really know where I was going with that, but uh, yeah, Rampage, Mark Henry coming in for that. Um, the Urban cameo with Charlie Strong uh, helping out Jericho against MJF I thought was hilarious. Uh, and we'll get more into the Stadium Stampede match here in a second, as I mentioned, towards the end of this. But um, yeah, a lot of these matches, honestly, going into the night last night, I thought, and I, I said this during preview recording, of course, that's nowhere to be found now because it was saved, but even with it um, restarting, updating on me, and then having recovered it, there was nothing there for some unknown reason. First time ever that happened to me, so I have no explanation for it. So, as mentioned, just, hey, I'll watch pay-per-view. We'll do a little bit of a recap post-event, as we've done before anyway. So, I mean, it's not really that big of a deal, but at the same time it is, you know, because I would have liked to have done what I was planning on doing, but now, voila, here we are. So, um, a lot of these matches, I thought, really could have gone either way. Um, even though the writing was on the wall with how predictable double or nothing was probably going to be last night. So, you know, with that and then, okay, they throw in the surprise of Mark Henry. Like, they didn't even announce that, hey, we're going to make an announcement on, you know, with Rampage, with that just being a public announcement a few weeks ago around noon the same day as the dynamite maybe the same day as blood and guts or a week or two after it was within the past few weeks i can recall that but don't remember exactly when i mean it's really not that big of a deal but like they didn't make any sort of announcement like when uh paul white was going to announce who the new signee was to the company when Christian Cage came in at Revolution. Like, they didn't do anything like that, but at the same time, they kept everyone uh, on the edge of their seat, as everyone always does, for the most part. Um, even with as predictable as it was, I mean, what, we had one title change, I think? If I'm not mistaken, yeah. And then, whoever won the Casino Battle Royal, which we'll get into in a second, which, of course, I know who won it, but I'm not going to say just yet, so you have to wait, but um, they're going to earn a AW World Championship opportunity now in two weeks, they announced. So, um, yeah. I mean, with all that, I mean, it was a, a damn good show. I thought it was. And, um, you know, hopefully moving forward, uh, only AW along with all these other wrestling promotions, WWE, whether or not New Japan's in with AEW, New Japan's in with the WWE. I think WWE's just trying to stir some shit up, honestly. Um, you know, AEW has relationships with both New Japan and Impact. I mean, Ring of Honor's getting back out there. Um, AAA, Kenny Omega's going to defend that title against Andrade in uh, August, if I'm not mistaken, around the same time Rampage debuts. Um... If not that same very night or that weekend, maybe. So maybe they'll have that title defense in the main event of that show. Um, don't take my word on that. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, just spitballing now, I guess. But uh, and seeing what sticks. But at the same time, it's like booking, if only, especially the Toe to be, as I always say, if the booking was 10 times better, you know, the, the shows wouldn't be as bad as they are, you know, nine times out of 10. But. They know we're still going to sit down and watch. They know they can do what they want because they know we're going to sit down and watch. And, um, hey, we'll sit here and bitch and complain about it all we want, but they're going to make their money and end the story. So, um, AW Double or Nothing last night on the road to the return of live fans. Uh, I believe one of these two is coming back home and then the other is gonna have a welcome back tour or something like that don't take me a word on that either don't really recall i mean there's been so many announcements as of late on hey with stuff getting back to normal you can do this you can do that now even though 
as much as shit's changed, everything stayed the same. Uh, excited for Return of Live fans, as mentioned, but um, AEW and the WWE come July, just a little over a month away now, technically. Um, here, May 31st, June 1st, once this is uploaded. Um, you know that, for the most part, everything's going to get back to the normal one. And last night, as mentioned, sold out Daly's Place in Jacksonville. JR, Jim Ross, Excalibur, Tony Schiavone on the call. Uh, Paul White, Big Show joined for the Battle Royale. Don Callis, along with Taz, were on commentary for a few matches last night as well. Uh, but uh, overall, in the end, I thought Double or Nothing was a, a damn good show. I did. If you didn't see it, um, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, well, welcome in. Don't know how you found this video then, but um, be sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already. But nonetheless, um, I'm sure there's highlight videos. I'm sure there's full uh, match videos online as well. Uh, I'm sure you could probably still order the replay. Even if you... Um, watch pay-per-view live or if you didn't whatever the case may be let me know in the comments below what you thought of aw double or nothing 2021 from last night as mentioned uh in my opinion going into the night going into the event thought a, a lot of the matches even though the writing was on the wall with how predictable the show was and most champions if not all were going to retain and uh continue their reigns as champions moving forward um thought a lot of the matches could go honestly either way with um we had on the buy-in the kickoff pre-show serena deeb defend her nwa women's championship against rio that was a banger of a match it honestly was you got the crowd fired up sun was still out uh and then we had a fan fest video package uh from the day before of course as mentioned with the uh reveal of some new aw action figures with unrivaled and now an unmatched series um so we'll see what that entails as well moving forward um and via uh jeremy potter from uh jazzwares uh he had stated that uh with the AEW unrivaled and unmatched uh series now uh along with uh AEW going to be announcing some new two packs, exclusives, accessories, rings, and sets to build out your AEW experience. Uh, the AEW Unrivaled and Unmatched are same scale, same quality, same packaging footprint. They're extensions of what, one another, and they're going to allow uh, Jazzwares and AEW to get additional retail space and more action figures uh, for everyone who collects. Uh, so, if you've seen videos of mine before, of course, you've seen behind me, I have a few hanging up. Um, as at a time, they were very, very hard to find, but now it seems like uh, you can get them uh, pretty much anywhere for the most part. But at the same time, it's like they could have done a little bit better of a job uh, with uh, the production and or just not even the production, but the distribution to it. Um, but they look damn good. Uh, some new figures that they did announce uh, since we're on the topic. Um, AEW Unrivaled um, with already having six series of those. Uh, they'll, of course, continue on with that and have an Unrivaled Series 7 with the Native Beast Nala Rose, who hasn't been seen in quite some time. Uh, FTR, Cash and Dax, uh, Lance Archer, who challenged Miro last night for the AW TNT title, and then uh, two more Young Bucks uh, in the Unrivaled Series 7 uh, for AW Unmatched, which they look the same. They do. Uh, it's just going to be in a different box. Uh, we're finally getting a Britt Baker one. So she's not going to have to retire. Uh, Miro as well. Uh, good to see Miro finally getting a AEW action figure. Who else in the AEW Unmatched Series 1? 
Britt Baker, Miro, Sting, uh, along with Kenny Omega and Gold Dust, Dustin Rose, Darby Allen. I don't know how to say his name. Uh, and then uh, with Series 2, Sting's in Series 2, actually. Um, we're getting a Wardlow and MJF, so Bodyguard and Superstar with Tay Conte as well, and then Santana and Ortiz. Um, Unmatched Series 3 is the whole entire Dark Order with the late, great, exalted one, Mr. Brody Lee as well, so definitely going to have to get my hands on that. Uh, so Brody Lee, uh, Stu Grayson, John Silver, Evil Uno, and Anna J, and then AW is also bringing back the LJNs uh, with Cody and Darby. And then also they announced, as they announced a lot on Saturday, they're bringing back the wrestling buddies as well with Cody Rhodes, Kenny Omega, Luchasaurus, and Darby Allen as well. So, um, yeah, that was the Fan Fest. We had the Fan Fest on Saturday. That's when I recorded before, but of course, now for the third time, as mentioned, that audio is nowhere to be found. But uh, we had a video package highlighting this uh, after the NWA Women's Championship match on the buy-in, which Serena Deeb defeated Rio to retain her title, too, by the way. So a FanFest video package, as mentioned, as they announced, new figures, and then we got in to the show. And surprisingly, but then looking back on it, it was a good opening contest with the match they put on first rather than putting it somewhere mid-card and then having to cut some time off potentially as uh, AW Double or Nothing last night was technically a four-hour pay-per-view from 8 to midnight um, as the main event wrapped up about 5 till uh, and then a little bit of celebration with who won the stadium stampede and we'll get into that as mentioned in a second but um, it was Hangman Adam Page and the Machine Brian Cage um, as Hangman defeated Brian Cage of Team Taz. Taz is on commentary for this. Uh, was going absolutely apeshit uh, when Ricky Starks came out along with Hook and sort of cost Brian Cage a match. So Hangman picking up the win uh, and then uh, post-match a little tension with Team Taz and Brian Cage walked out by himself. So we'll see what the future holds for Team Taz. Of course, Ricky Starks currently right now on the shelf we'll see how long he's going to actually be injured for but um we'll see what the future holds for brian cage if they're actually going to do something with him too as he's been ftw champion since last july and he hasn't done uh jack shit with that championship title uh so yeah honestly don't know what else to say but hangman picked up the win uh, another win in the record column for him so uh Good for Hangman Adam Page. Hopefully they'll push him uh, into a championship pitcher, uh, whether that's up against Miro for the TNT title, which honestly wouldn't be that uh, bad an idea. Miro, Lance Archer, still later on in the show. So technically Miro, at this point in time, still TNT champion. Will he still be TNT champion after his match with Lance Archer? Find out and see for yourselves. Thanks once more for listening. Uh, and then maybe they push Hangman, you know, up against Kenny Omega. As I've been stating for quite a while, and I'll state it again later. So we'll often wait uh, for that. But, yeah, it's Hangman on page and Brian Cage and Hangman, who got a very loud pop from the crowd, picked up the win. Uh, next, even though it was the second match of the evening, it felt like it was the bottom of the ninth in Northeast Ohio with the Cleveland Indians as Wild Thing Rick Vaughn John Moxley and Eddie Kingston made their entrance came out, challenged the Young Bucks for the AEW World Tag Team titles Daly's Place Major League 3 if you will with AEW Double or Nothing uh, as of late the past month with of course Moxley uh, changing his entrance two wild things so the wild things uh went up against the young bucks uh the good brothers with don callus uh callus is on the call and then the good brothers came out 
a little interference from them Young Bucks did a shield reunion as they put their fist out of course Moxley would have been the third in the middle and then I can't recall if it was either Matt or Nick but um, and one dyed their hair a little bit lighter too and they're growing their beards out again so uh, they're supposed to be the heel tag team that they are and you know they're one of the best if not the best tag team still in all of pro wrestling uh, worldwide so um, the Young Bucks they did a Reigns impression with ooh ah him about ready to go for a spear it was pretty funny it was uh, but um, in the end the Young Bucks ended up picking up the win they retained their AEW World Tag Team Championships against John Moxley and Eddie Kingston we'll see what happens with Mox moving forward if he's going to be sticking around for a little while or taking some time off with baby number one on the way with Renee uh, as uh, she should be due at any point in time here coming up over the next few weeks or so if I'm not mistaken same thing goes with Cody and Brandy uh, with her being pregnant as well but um, at the same time AEW is getting back on the road and right now still they're only on you know one night a week two come August but you know AEW can make it work they could have them stick around and uh, continue or start fresh new feuds if needed whatever the case may be whatever you know which way they want to go with the booking but um, the thing is if Moxley does go away what the hell happens Eddie Kingston you know he get, he just gets left hanging high and dry so um, was hoping potentially for Moxley and Eddie Kingston to pick up the win last night whether it would have been by DQ okay or not Young Bucks retain but um, I knew you know for the most part Young Bucks were probably going to win and retain their titles and they did and they did it clean so one two three with the pin and Young Bucks still as mentioned your AEW World Tag Team Champions next was the Casino Battle Royale of course with Paul White on the call and with the Casino Battle Royals in the AEW World you have your card deck you have your different suits from a card deck so whether you drew a, a spade or a diamond or a heart maybe even a club for that matter to sweep me you're gonna enter either first second third or last and then you have the uh, wild card joker mystery person to come out last uh, so you know it's your typical battle royal but they spice it up with of course the gimmick history with AEW going all in now double or nothing now we're going to go all out and last night was double or nothing so um, I did hear too they're going to have a women's casino battle royal if I'm not mistaken at all out could be wrong so don't take my word on that either but um, yeah you have your different uh, categories throughout a deck of cards of course and five in each and then your mystery so a 21 man casino battle royal at the 2021 AEW double or nothing last night thought maybe the mystery person uh, was either going to be from either New Japan or TNA Impact with the current relationships maybe even Andrade or Daniel Bryan he'd of course have to go by Bryan Danielson of course a month ago his WWE deal ran up as far as we know it did has been on TV since um, so and it eventually wasn't either of those two um, definitely wasn't going to be Jack Nicholson uh, Heath Ledger or Joaquin Phoenix as the Joker in this battle royal even though technically they are the Joker and then as mentioned earlier too maybe the battle royal was going to turn into Tebow time and Tim Tebow is going to come out after he just signed with the Jacksonville Jaguars to play tight end Hell, he hasn't played football in six years. He's playing baseball since. And, you know, going back to him coming out of college from Florida, now he's reunited with his former college coach, Nerva Meyer, the new head man of the Jacksonville Jaguars, who, as mentioned, made the cameo last night during the stadium stampede match. And we'll get into that once more in a minute when the time rolls around. But um, 
not a quarterback, want him to play tight end. He says no. He plays quarterback, gets run out of the league because he can't cut it, plays baseball, can't cut it there either. Now he's back in the NFL playing tight end. Will he make the team or not? I don't know. Maybe he has a um, career in pro wrestling with AEW uh, come the fall uh, when you know he does, in fact, end up getting cut. But um, at the same time, his jersey is a top seller right now in the NFL. Um, a lot of exposure for the Jags, taking some pressure off Trevor Lawrence. He might make the team. I don't know. I really don't care right now. I want to talk about pro wrestling and not football. Uh, as football is, you know, of course, still a few months away. But as mentioned uh, recently, keeping out for some upcoming football videos from uh, the past month or so, right after the draft, with the draft, uh, a little trip I took uh, with a good friend of mine, along with um, the NFL schedule release. So um, keeping out for videos uh, towards the beginning of the season end of summer early fall around preseason time for those to be released uh but yeah aw double or nothing last night um this battle royal uh max caster yo 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 cut a yo yo fire disc promo again last night uh he was in the first group whether you know they were the spades the diamonds clubs or hearts i can't recall i think the diamonds were last and then the Joker came out. Um, and the Joker ended up being Leo Rush, of all people. Um, which, okay, is what it is. He really didn't get that big of a pop. Um, I mean, he sort of made a name for himself, I guess you could say, since he left WWE recently. Um, not really, though. I mean... He's not that bad of a wrestler, but at the same time, it's like, okay, he probably maybe could spice up the cruiserweight division in AEW, even though technically they don't even have one. You know, just, I mean, hey, maybe him and Marco stunt to have a feud. Have uh, Jurassic Express with Luchasaurus on the shelf right now, and Jungle Boy, we'll get into him with this Battle Royal in a second. Um,. Marco Stunt and Leo Rush go at it, have Rush start his own stable or something like that. Um, they'll probably put him on dark or dark elevation, put people over. You know, maybe if they do re sign him, or technically not even re sign him, bring him in and sign him to a full contract. And then talk about re signing. I would assume with AEW going into their third year technically in early 2022 that some of these talents if they haven't already technically re-signed their deals are going to be coming up so keep an eye out for that you know when time rolls around too uh, just a thought but um you know maybe he'll be on rampage because with dynamite and rampage and you know with what i said earlier too they need to watch with who they sign but at the same time it's making the company better like it's really not that big of a deal at that point but um you know half the roster is of course going to go be on dynamite the other half uh on rampage dynamite will be aw's raw rampage will be aw smackdown and then nxt is just floating after aw beat them on wednesday nights in this so-called wednesday night war that all us fans dubbed but um max caster came out in the first group uh another disc promo and he's like Enzo to me right now he is um you know he's he's damn good on the mic maybe Enzo is going to be the next one they bring into the company um you know ride back teased last night that was going to be him and um we'll see how long it's going to take for him to put up another poll and what company do you want me to sign with and don't say retirement but who the F is Griff Garrison? Well, he was in the Battle Royal with Pillman, uh, the Varsity Blondes. Uh, not the Hollywood Blondes, but the Varsity Blondes. Uh, Pillman got a big pop with the recent uh, Dark Side of the Ring documentary on his dad recently. But uh, yeah, Max Caster came out, uh, kept saying yo like 10,000 times, even got the commentary team to yo, yo, yo. 
uh, hey, it's crime time. Maybe, well, Shad's dead, but maybe JTG will be next. Um, but Max Caster saying Christian used to have an edge. Now he doesn't. Uh, Matt Seidel is also out there. Talked about him slipping and falling off the top rope uh, when he debuted last year at Double or Nothing, actually. So Matt Seidel has been in the company now for a year, which is hard to believe. Uh, of course, formerly known as Evan Bourne. Uh, maybe they'll push the Seidel brothers in the tag team division. Maybe not, though. We'll see. Uh, and then he also got on uh, Dustin Rhodes, of course, Gold Dust, who now only paints half of his face. But he said Dustin Rhodes should paint his whole face since he's ugly. So that goes back to when he did actually paint his full face when he was Gold Dust in the WWE. But uh, yeah, Max Caster every week. Um, I mean, a few weeks ago, oral sessions with John Moxley. I mean, that was pretty funny talking about Renee and her podcast. Um, something new each week with him. So Max Caster in the acclaimed. I honestly think they could be like with how the Street Profits are right now, but as a heel tag team. Uh, but yeah, future bright for him for sure, no doubt about it. But uh, and then with this Casino Battle Royal to wrap this match and segment up real quick, um, winners I thought going into maybe with everyone that was involved uh, actually in the match, as um, we'll go over. Actually, everyone that came out first. So the clubs were first. It was Christian Cage, Matt Seidel, Powerhouse Will Hobbs, the Team Taz, uh, Dustin Rhodes, and then Max Caster. I didn't think Christian was going to win because he's in a feud right now with Team Taz. Him and Hobbs went at it Friday night backstage. Seidel was an option because he was an odd man out with all the groups, all the different singles and tag team uh people that were in this match Dustin Rhodes maybe but you know with the Nightmare Family and the Factory still going at it Cody Rhodes Anthony Nagogo was still to come as well didn't think it was going to be him um, had Isaiah Cassidy Matt Hardy number 10 of the Dark Order Preston Vance uh, Serpentico in the Diamonds and then Pillman and Griff Garrison Colt Cabana, Anthony Bowens, and Penta as Hearts. And then the Spades before the Joker, Leo Rush, came out. Which, you know, he really is a Joker. He's damn good on the mic, too. I wouldn't mind seeing him and um, Max Gaster going at it back and forth with one another. But Jungle Boy, Mark Quinn, Anthony uh, Solo, Ding Dong, Hello, Evil Uno, and then Lee Johnson as well. But... Um, yeah, everyone that was announced, I mean, QT Marshall and somebody else got pulled, but um, everyone that was in this match, I thought either Matt Seidel, Penta, because there's no Ray Phoenix, or Jungle Boy, because no Luchasaurus, could very well end up winning this. And then Jungle Boy outlasted Christian Cage, who entered first, and at a time I thought, okay, he entered first. He was just with the WWE at the beginning of the year, four months ago now when he was in the Royal Rumble this year. And you remember back to that, Edge came out at number one and won the whole goddamn thing. Well, Christian entered at one last night, and I thought at a time there towards the end, he was going to end up winning it, and they are going to sort of have the same story. You know, get him over a little bit more. But then uh, he ended up getting eliminated uh, by Matt Hardy, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, Christian Cage. Um, or... No, Matt Hardy was eliminated by Christian Cage, so vice versa. Uh, and then Jungle Boy eliminated Christian to end up winning the uh, Battle Royal last night. So um, could see Matt Hardy and Christian go at it once more now in AEW, as they've done in the WWE and in TNA, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but uh, Jungle Boy with the win, he is now going to challenge for the AEW World Heavyweight Championship in two weeks time. I believe that would be the first Dynamite back on Wednesday night. So technically like a week and a half now from now. Because it will be on Friday this week and then a short week for Wednesday. But from what I heard this Friday 
this upcoming weekend, they're going to be taping TV for a few weeks. So technically those first few Wednesdays back won't actually be live, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and then they'll have another taping for like two weeks, maybe two more live shows in Jacksonville before they hit the road. July the 7th, they'll be in Miami. And then to end the month, they'll be in the state of Texas, in which the WWE will also be when they get back on the road mid-July for the Money in the Bank weekend. So, uh, Jungle Boy, yeah, he ended up winning. Outlast to Christian Cage. And uh, it'll be Jungle Boy and Kenny Omega for the AEW World Heavyweight Championship in two weeks' time. Um, and this was, of course, before Omega defended the world title against Pac and Orange Cassidy later on. So, does Omega retain? Sit back and relax. Find out and see for yourself. Um, so, yeah, Matt Hardy, Christian, seems like they got a little bit of a feud going on. Maybe we'll have the Hardy family operation uh, and Team Taz go at it. Maybe Hardy and Christian become a tag team to take on Team Taz because Christian's still got the Team Taz situation over him with Hobbs. Um, and as mentioned, you got the family with the factory still going at it. Um, you have a lot going on in AEW with Dynamite, Dark, Dark Elevation, and now Rampage. Going to be uh, kicking off in August, as mentioned. So... Um, we'll see what the future holds, but yeah, Jungle Boy picking up the win in the Casino Battle Royale. Speaking of the Nightmare family and the factory, it was the American Dream Cody Rhodes for one night only, of course, taking his father's nickname as uh, Cody Rhodes here from the U.S. took on the Olympian from the U.K. and Anthony Agogo and picked up the win. Next, we had another title defense. It was Miro. Happy Miro Day, everyone. Of course, really known as Rusev in the WWE. It was Miro and Lance Archer for the AWTNT title. Um, this rivalry, well, Miro recently just beat Darby Allen for the championship. The rivalry was Darby and Lance Archer chasing. But Lance Archer, with Miro being a heel, and... Lance was a heel up against Darby because Darby's so over. But then they take the title off of Darby. Teamed up with Sting, of course. Tag team match still to come. Miro's now TNT champion. They had to switch Lance to a face. It's working, but at the same time, it's not. Miro's still so over as well. So, I mean, once more with this match, honestly could have gone either way. I thought Miro was going to win because I didn't think they'd take the title off him so soon just because he, you know, just won it. Uh, they didn't take it off him. Miro picked up the win. He's still TNT champion. But with Lance Archer, they got to figure out what the hell they're doing with him because he's just been floating around, holding his ground, it seems like, for like the past year, year and a half, two years. It's like they push him, but it doesn't go anywhere. It's like, I don't know if they're... I mean, I know they're not scared to push him because they pushed him. But I don't know if they feel, or whatever the case may be, hey, we're just going to push him to lose, but then we can figure it out later on. Like, some things make sense, some, of course, don't. Um... They got to figure out what they're doing with him. Maybe, you know, with the new show, he could be a top star there. Um, you know, two hours of TV, I mean, they'll be at four, and then with as long as dark and dark elevation are sometimes, I mean, hell, they're going to have a lot of time to kill, uh, but a lot of time to do what they want and get over the talent they want moving forward. So, you know, hopefully it doesn't turn into a bad booking situation at that point, but. Only time's going to tell, but uh, it was an all right match. Pretty good. A little bit better than Cody and a go-go with their singles match. Um, as technically Cody and a go-go would have been the second singles match 
of the evening on the main card at least um followed by of course hangman adam page and brian cage who kicked off the show and then the tag team championship pitcher um with young bucks defeating the wild thing tag team of john moxley and eddie kingston then the battle royal um so what we're at i believe 9 9 30 quarter 10 at this point um the Cody Rhodes, Anthony Gogo weigh-in on Dynamite last week was a complete disaster, I thought. It, like, I don't know. Anthony Gogo is another one. Like, they're trying to push him, but it's just not working. But you try to push this person, but it's working. But then on their end, you know, whether it's backstage politics or what, you know, it's not. So... Yeah, I really didn't dive deep into Cody's and Agogo's match, but um, the Miro Lance Archer match was a little bit better, but not by much. I mean, I thought it felt rushed. And speaking of rushing, with Miro and Lance Archer making their entrances, uh, they had a spot which was a little bit of a botch to kick off the match on the entrance ramp and with AEW double or nothing last night and dynamite last week on the friday night and then this upcoming friday as well and then probably for the next month they uh changed the setup they only have the one tunnel now for the entrance and it's on the left side and then they put the they kept the screen where it is but they added more seats up on the stage um but jake snake roberts eventually came out And Miro, as of late, has been calling him an old man. He actually beat him up during Fan Fest on Saturday. Um, And Lance stood tall on Dynamite last week after Miro defended for the first time all weekend and then the second time in 72 hours just last night. Still TNT champion. Um, But, yeah, like I said, they got to figure out what they're doing with Lance Archer, but and, and Jake's not bad uh, for being a manager at, at his age. You know, good to see him, you know, still around, especially the way he was. But um, he did come out late in the match. Um, there are two separate beatdowns from Miro to him. He's been calling him an old man. I don't know if that's a shot towards Vince or anyone in particular by any means or not. Uh, but um, Jake came out with a sack full of snakes course he's jake the snake roberts what the hell else is he going to come out with but then miro with a little bit of a distraction he ended up picking up that sack of snakes and this actually drew a lot of attention we didn't see he picked up the sack full of snakes and threw it back up the ramp threw it towards the entrance but with it drawing a lot of attention with of course snakes being an animal we all know damn well there were not actually real live snakes in that sack. Okay? So, I mean, if there were, had to have been fake. If there was anything in there, I mean, it could have been, it could have been extra toilet paper that everyone had left over from last year. It could have been, you know, hell, I don't know anything but real live snakes if there were snakes in there at all and if they were they were fake so like get over it calm the hell down it's not that big of a deal it did draw a lot of attention but at the same time that's what they want they want eyes on their product and that's what they got i don't know what the pay-per-view buys were we're not going to know that for a while but um i'm sure with everyone that was there and with the trends on social media last night AW Double or Nothing will be another success, as Stadium Stampede was as well. But Miro, before we get into these final matches, Miro did have this to say on Twitter following his win, as he's still your TNT champion. Miro tweeted, I'm the champ. Bring PETA, Peter Pan, I don't give a rat's ass. Hashtag, yeet that shit. So... Miro being Miro, happy Miro day, everyone. But uh, yeah, that was pretty damn funny, I thought. After that, we had Sheeta 
defend her AEW Women's Heavyweight Championship of the World against the Dr. Britt Baker DMD herself as Ding Dong Hello, the face of the AEW Women's Division and the true role model in all pro wrestling. Even though Bailey is also top notch, Britt Baker's your new AEW Women's Champion. Uh, very, very good match. A lot of near pinfalls towards the end. Back and forth. Uh, the claw was the finish, and Britt made Sheeta submit. Uh, watch for Thunder Rosa to return at some point in time coming up here soon uh, to challenge Britt Baker for the AW Women's Championship. Uh, even though Sheeta uh, shouldn't, she probably will uh, get a rematch um, after they're holding the title for a little over a year. And, you know, rightfully so. I mean, she held the championship through a pandemic of all times. And personally, I really thought they dropped the ball with her after learning she speaks perfect English with the promo she cut uh, introducing the new AEW Women's Championship title belt also on Dynamite this past week. So, the AEW Women's Division now, for the most part, officially fixed. We'll see what they do now moving forward. Uh, but Britt Baker's your new champion. Y you have, you know, Serena Deeb is your NWA Women's Champion. Uh, there's a relationship there with AEW and NWA. You know, New Japan and Impact as well. But it, it's Britt Baker, it's Thunder Rosa, it's Sheeta, it's Serena Deeb, and then, you know, the list goes on from there. I mean, if you're in Chris Statlander, Tay Ty Conte, um, uh, I'm sure there's a few others that I'm not naming off right now. But, I mean, they have the talent. It's just they haven't done any damn thing with the AEW Women's Division the past two years and it's been a bit of a disappointment but now for the most part they're getting on track it's on schedule to hey we're gonna do this now hopefully enjoy if you don't well your loss not ours so at least they're trying so we'll see what happens moving forward but then after that we had this uh tag team match with sting and darby allen along with scorpio sky and the karate man ethan page as All Ego uh, debuted at the Revolution pay-per-view. Uh, so, AEW with these pay-per-views of late. Uh, a lot of surprise, whether they've been uh, returns or debuts, however you want to put it. Um, they're gaining talent. They're still building their company, so uh, future's bright. But um, you knew Sting and Darby were going to pick up the win. They did. Um, wasn't that bad of a tag team match. Could have been a little bit better. So, yeah, after the first, what, three, four matches of the night, I mean, Hangman and Brian Cage, yeah, good kickoff uh, match to start the show at 8 o'clock. I mean, the tag team championship match with the Box and Mox and Kingston was stellar. Battle Royal was pretty good. I mean, at times, yeah, it got a little bit of a uh, bore to it. I mean... I don't know if it was just because they were taking a little bit longer in between to announce with the countdown clock on, you know, who's coming out next or what. But, um, you yeah, know, Jungle Boy won that. And then, yeah, the Cody Rhodes, Anthony Gogo, Miro, Lance Archer matches could have been better as well, I thought. I mean, they went out and put on a show, but... I mean, not every night's going to be a good night. I get it. Every dog has his day. But at the same time, it's like... With the whole entire show being as top-notch as it was, you know, with all the fans there sold out, they knew they wanted to put on a good show. And they did. But, I mean, a four-hour pay-per-view, regardless of the company, is a lot of wrestling. Especially if you're sitting there watching it live in a living color, live at the event, or from home or wherever you're watching it yeah there's a midway point that's like okay get this done and over with and let's go home and get on with the next match um i mean the Britt baker uh sheet of match arguably one of the best if not the best match of the night i thought it was it was that good uh but then of course the main event the stadium stampede match stole the show once more with it being cinematic uh 
And I don't know personally how much of that was actually pre-taped or live. I know, of course, with the ending, with how it all unfolded, okay, that was live. And we'll get into that once more in a second, so stay tuned. I know I've said that a few times, but hold your horses. So, yeah, Sting and Darby, they picked up the win. It was Sting's first match in front of live fans in six years. you got to go back to 2015. It was right after he faced off against Triple H, WrestleMania 31. He then challenged Seth Frickin' Rollins for the World Championship that fall, September of 2015 at Clash of Champions. Of course, injured once more, hurt his neck. Hasn't wrestled since in the WWE. Of course, debuted with AEW in December, right before Christmas. Uh, and it was interview with Tony Schiavone, interview with Tony Schiavone, interview with Tony Schiavone. They had the cinematic match at Revolution. More interviews with Tony Schiavone, whether they were in the ring, at the entrance, backstage. That's all Sting's done. And then he's in a tag team match with Darby. And then Sting and Darby defeat Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page. Even though they really haven't done a whole lot with Sting, I, I think they need to continue doing what they're doing with them. Even though it's not a lot, just because he's in the process of continuing to put over Darby Allen. And Darby's already over as much as he is, but um, with the help of you know Sting continuing to do what he's doing, Darby's going to be a uh, top dog here eventually. I mean, he was already a TNT champion. Maybe he's going to be going after Kenny Omega at some point in time. I mean, hell, if they're throwing Pac and Orange Cassidy up against Omega for the world title. There's no reason they can't put Darby Allen up against Kenny uh, for the world title as well. But, tie in Sting and Darby Allen to the Dark Order now. Of course, Dark Order, their former leader, and the late great exalted one, Mr. Brody Lee, passed day after Christmas this past year. May he rest in peace, gone but not forgotten. And Dark Order's, for the most part, just been hanging out, floating around ever since. They really haven't been doing a whole lot. Uh, but now it seems like they're getting back on their feet. They're getting back on track. Um, I think personally, because with how it's been as of late, okay, go back to Revolution as well. They had the money match with Matt Hardy and Hangman. Okay, whoever wins that's probably going to be the new leader of the Dark Order. Well, since then, not really. I mean, Hangman's still there, but as the new leader of the Dark Order, I don't think so. Because... And, I mean, you just go back to Dynamite last week, but then weeks prior as well. Every time, you know, Sting and Darby are in trouble, here come the Dark Order. Here come the Dark Order with the save. So, um, I think Sting or Darby, maybe both are going to be leaders or co-leaders of the Dark Order um, in a matter of time, just a matter of when. So, um, we'll see what happens there. Next, then, we had the co-main event of the evening. They dubbed it as two co-main event matches. AW World Heavyweight Championship and then the Stadium Stampede. AW World Title was first. It was Kenny Omega, the Bastard Pack, and freshly squeezed Orange Cassidy. Kenny Omega, of course, retained his championship. Uh, he used all four titles that he is currently holding as he is your AW World Heavyweight Champion. He is your TNA World Heavyweight Champion. He is your Impact Champion. He is your AAA Champion. He attacked the ref with Callus on commentary for this as well. Callus came down, got in the ref's face. Uh, they're arguing back and forth, and then Kenny attacked him in the ring then, the ref, that is, uh, and then used all four separate title belts to uh, hit Pac, Pac, the bastard himself, however you want to say it, uh, in the head. Orange Cassie had a few orange punches, but in the end, Kenny Omega picked up the win, of course, and retained his AEW World Heavyweight Championship. Now, moving forward, okay, Hangman just defeated Brian Cage. Hangman, you know, could be a possibility for the TNT title with Miro, Cody Rhodes in the same boat. Maybe Darby will be getting a few rematches. Um, you know, we'll see what they do with, with that mid-card title. Um, you know, Lance Archer as well. But... Um, Maybe even Anthony Agogo, even with the loss. Matt Hardy, Christian, 
Um, you know, Jungle Boy after he loses to Kenny, maybe he challenges Miro then. I mean, list is a mile long in, in this category as well for contenders, challengers for Miro's TNT title, but um, they need to, in my opinion at least, this is how I'd book it. Might be a little bit of fantasy booking, but you revisit the elite storyline with Hangman getting kicked out of the group. You see what's going on right now with the heel group, heel faction of the elite to sweep me once more. Of course, with Kenny Omega as your world champion, you have the Young Bucks as AEW tag team champions. You have the Good Brothers there now as well, right by their side. Of course, with the relationship with TNA Impact. Writing sort of on the wall, too, I think, with Impact potentially getting bought out with Rampage coming in now for AEW. We'll see. Maybe, maybe not. I mean, if Impact would have got sold, they would have been sold by now. Um, they've been down, but they're getting back on their feet, but it's still not 2006, 2010. So, um, you know, we'll see what happens there. I mean, maybe Impact just becomes Rampage and it's just an invasion of some sorts. I don't know. We'll see come August, but I would revisit that storyline. Of course, Hangman got kicked out. Couldn't stay sober. Um, he's been doing his own little thing. Now he's, in my eyes at least, even though I want him as a new leader of the Dark Order, he's not going to be. It's going to be Stinger Darby. You have Hangman challenge Kenny Omega for the AEW World title. Now, they could put Christian up against Omega as well. But with him and Matt Hardy now going back and forth, I think they would hold off on that. I mean, Kenny's going to have somebody uh, over the summer to defend his title against. I mean, the AAA title, of course, against Andrade in August. But then all out, they're going to have to have a match for that championship as well, especially in front of live fans in Chi-Town, the windy city of Chicago, Illinois. So um, revisit the Elite story. Bring Hangman back in. Maybe he's the one that, you know, can... As he tore him down before, maybe he can tear him down as a whole. And, you know, because they're just taking over AEW. They are burning down, tearing down the house. They are. I mean, but that's what heels do. This is, you know, their current character. It's damn good, no doubt about it. But storyline for telling a story, you know, this guy soap opera that pro wrestling is whether you think it's fake or not hangman would be that guy i think to you know put his foot back in put it down at least and stand his ground and challenge kenny and then maybe take the title off of omega at that point come all out would have held the title then for what almost a year come december so i mean a few months in the fall but um you know would be subtracted from that of course but at the same time, too, well, Moxley, maybe he challenges Miro. Maybe he gets back in the world title picture. Maybe him and Kingston have their own little feud. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, I know I'm going on and on about it, but there's a lot of you know different potential options they could go with. And, you know, we'll see beginning, well, I guess technically tonight with Dark and Dark Elevation and then with Dynamite this Friday night and then Dynamite's on Wednesdays. And then once Rampage comes in, you know, go from there. But maybe take the title off of Omega, come all out, put it on Hangman. And then with the main event match, that's next, with the Stadium Stampede, with the Inner Circle and the Pinnacle, Chris Jericho and MJF. Of course, well, I'll break the news now. The Inner Circle picked up the win. We're going to dive deep into that match coming up shortly. Matter of seconds, so stay tuned once more. But that's the fourth or fifth time I've said it. I know, I know. But um, MJF's just going to be sitting there as a star in the making. And then, as a heel champion for Omega right now, you put on a face hangman. And then, voila, you have your heel MJF come in to challenge hangman. And, okay, Hangman at that point in time probably won't get the run he deserves as champion. Maybe he will, maybe he won't. We'll see. But then MJF's AW World Heavyweight Champion by this time next year, probably. 
Double or nothing 2022 if he doesn't win the championship sooner. MJF's winning it at this pay-per-view, I would think, at the earliest next year. So, we'll see what happens moving forward. But as mentioned, yes, the Stadium Stampede was, in fact, the main event of the evening. It was the Inner Circle and the Pinnacle following the Blood and Guts event just a few weeks ago in which the Pinnacle defeated the Inner Circle. And now, for Stadium Stampede, the second ever and potentially last Stadium Stampede match if the inner circle would lose, they would have to break up, as Chris Jericho loves to say, forever. So uh, the entrances were pretty cool. Pinnacle came out in a limo. Actually, it was just MJF by himself. Uh, and then the inner circle made their entrance coming off of the scoreboard at TIA Bankfield in Jacksonville, home of the NFL's Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, and then with Daly's plays just right there, right outside of the stadium you could hear the fans singing very loudly to Judas uh, during the entrance but then FTR uh, along with Spears and Wardlow they came driving in with Tully in the back uh, driving the FTR's truck into the stadium they got out everybody started to fight Tully looked like he was on his way to fuck the bitch but that's the least of what was about to happen uh, but um, it was, of course, Jericho and MJF, Sammy Guevara and Sean Spears. You had Hager and Wardlow. And then you had your tag teams with uh, Stan Ortiz and FTR going at it five on five with Tully Blanchard just hanging out. And they had a club segment, so that's where the tag team uh, part of the match was. But course begin with the entrances I thought they were pretty cool uh, but then MJF and Chris Jericho fought into the coaches room uh, of course backstage in the depths of uh, TA Bankfield home the Jags once more where they ran into Urban Meyer and Charlie Strong of course former uh, coaching partners at Florida Charlie Strong got the job at Louisville. Of course, went to Texas. Didn't have that good of a run. South Florida, fired from there as well. Now he's the linebackers coach, if I'm not mistaken, for the Jags. With Urban, of course, Bowling Green, Utah, Florida, Ohio State, the three-time national champion, winning college football coach, is now dabbling in the NFL for the first time ever. And he has Trevor Lawrence now as quarterback. Took Travis Etienne as well in the first round. Another Clemson Tiger, now in Duval. Uh, but uh, we'll see what happens with the Jags moving forward. As, of course, first ever 18-week, 17-game NFL regular season coming up this year. And Urban's never coached in the NFL before. So I don't know how it's going to work out. I think he'll win. It's just a matter of when. So... Yeah, they ran into Urban and Charlie Strong in Urban's office, it looked like. And then Charlie Strong with a few footballs as Jericho was gaining advantage of MJF. Charlie Strong threw uh, Jericho a few footballs. Jericho then hit MJF right in the head a few times with a few footballs. And then there's a chair segment. And this and in the chair room with Sean Spears. Of course, the chairman himself had to be in a chair room with 10 million different kinds of chairs. But uh, Jericho sat MJF down in an office chair and then pushed him through the door over a set of steps and MJF went flying through a table. And then as the cameraman walked by, you heard Urban Meyer say, holy shit. It was hilarious. Go watch it. I thought it was funny. But, uh, so then, with Jericho and MJF working each other, they kept working backstage in the football offices, it seemed like, because they uh, got into the conference room a little bit later on. But first off, after Urban made his cameo, which blew up the internet, we went to Jake Hager and Wardlow as they were uh, fighting... Uh, backstage in the kitchen, it seemed like. There was a freezer. Uh, there was a 
a warehouse part that they were fighting in as well. Um, they had uh, Larry Steve, Alexa's now deceased pig, uh, cut up, hanging, butchered in the freezer. All jokes aside, of course, it wasn't Larry Steve, but there's a pig, you know, about to uh, be cut up. So thought that was pretty funny. I mean, you could tell it was a fake-ass pig. It looked like it was styrofoam, but um, that was the first thing I thought of just with that news from last week. And, you know, as mentioned, all jokes aside, losing a pet is one of the worst things ever. So, um, of course, Alexa was very shook up last week when that happened, unfortunately. But, um, yeah, Hager and Wardlow were fighting in the freezer part along with the warehouse part of TIA Bank Field, as were uh, Sammy Guevara and Sean Spears. But then Sammy and Spears are also fighting in this chair room, as Spears, of course, is the chairman. That's been his gimmick. Uh, they finally found him something to do, as Tully was managing him, but then once FTR came in, Tully was managing them as well. But then they get the pinnacle together. Well, they're all together then at that point, so it all works out. Uh, here in the end. So then uh, we go to the club as well with Conan the Barbarian, who was on DJ, as uh, Santana and Ortiz, of course, LAX, uh, with Conan in, in, involved now as well. Just for last night, I don't know if they're going to use them moving forward or not, but this is really the only time we saw these two tag teams with Santana and Ortiz and FTR. It was in this club part as they fought throughout the club and then into the elevator and then they went back down to the warehouse with Hager and Wardlow and um, can't recall I think Wardlow got choke slammed yeah Hager choke slammed Wardlow through like a, a makeshift table that was like a few feet high if I'm not mistaken um, so yeah that was the last we saw the tag teams plus the big men and then with Jericho and MJF and Guevara and Spears, we went back to Jericho and MJF actually first. They fought into the uh, coach's conference room. That was when we saw the cardboard cutout of Shot Khan. And then Jericho got the staple gun, stapled a thank you note to MJF's forehead, which had to have hurt if he actually did. Uh, Floyd the Bat made an appearance. There are a lot of garbage can hits. Um, Jericho actually threw MJF through a glass door once more. Um, and then as... Yeah, this would have been right after Spears and Guevara did what they had done. And then... Yeah, because Sammy got... There are a pair of bolt cutters. And Spears threw him, but then he tied up, he handcuffed Sammy to some post. But then, of course, we saw Spears get chased down from the inner circle bike group. And then Sammy was in his golf cart as well. And then both Sammy Guevara and Sean Spears fought their way back into the ring. So as mentioned, you know, with like I said earlier, not knowing, okay, how much of this was actually pre-taped and then live. This is when it actually got live in front of the f fans with uh, Guevara and Spears in the ring as they did most of the dirty work uh, late in the match here. Uh, the chairman himself with a chair shot right to the head of Sam and Guevara. Um, Jericho and MGF in the meantime, they were fighting back into Daly's place as well through the crowd they're actually way up top uh, as it's an amphitheater you know it's got it's different sections uh, different levels and this was the last time we saw MJF as uh, Jericho power bombed MJF through a makeshift landing in the crowd sort of as they had the crash pad for Jericho when MJF pushed him off of the uh, cage for blood and guts just a few weeks ago so the finish, I thought, could have been a little bit better, but overall, the Stadium Stampede match was damn good once more. 
don't think anything's ever going to top the first one because it's the first one. You know, it's like Home Alone to Home Alone 2. Or then Home Alone 2 actually wasn't that bad, but Home Alone 2 to Home Alone 3. Or Toy Story 1 to Toy Story 2. Like, the sequel's never better than the first one. You know, I don't care what it's for, it just never is. So, finish could have been a little bit better, but overall, very, very good match. Overall, very, very good show, I thought, with Double or Nothing. But the finish for the Stadium Stampede match here uh, was, in fact... Sammy Guevara with Sean Spears in the ring. Sammy pinned Spears. And then the rest of the inner circle just magically appeared. They joined and they all celebrated the win as they went off the air right around midnight, as mentioned, uh, for a four-hour pay-per-view for AEW Double or Nothing 2021. So, hell, even Sammy Guevara could be an option you know, for Miro or Kenny Omega at some point in time down the line for one of those two championships with as over as Sammy Guevara is right now, too. Uh, so we'll see if the future holds there. But, uh, yeah, overall, I thought it was a damn good show. Uh, final results once more. Uh, Serena Deeb defeated Rio to retain the NWA Women's Championship. Hangman Adam Page defeated Brian Cage. The Young Bucks defeated John Moxley and Eddie Kingston. Uh, Jungle Boy, Jungle Boy Jack, Jungle Boy Jack Perry, the 10,000 nickname JR has for him. Jungle Boy, the son of the late great Luke Perry, uh, won the Casino Battle Royale. Uh, Cody Rhodes defeated Anthony Agogo. Miro defeated Lance Archer to retain his AEW TNT title as well. Britt Baker is your new AEW Women's Champion. Sting and Darby Allen defeated Scorpio Sky and All Ego Ethan Page. Kenny Omega is still your AEW World Heavyweight Champion, along with still being your TNA and Impact World Heavyweight Champion and AAA Champion right now as well. Uh, and then the Inner Circle defeated the Pinnacle in this year's Stadium Stampede match. They were better than the Pinnacle, the Inner Circle were, at Double or Nothing last night, uh, picking up the win, and you know it, so... Let me know in the comments below what you thought of AEW Double or Nothing in the comments below. And as always, once more, thank you for tuning in and listening. I'm your host, Encyclopedia of Sports, Cool Hand Luke 96. Be sure to like, follow, and subscribe on social media. Links in the description below. Hopefully, you'll tune in for live reactions, play the play of NXT TakeOver in your house and WWE Hell in a Cell on Sundays, June 13th and 20th, respectively, live right here on YouTube. And, uh, yeah, I'll see everybody then. And, uh, as I mentioned, always keep an eye out for new videos right here on the channel. All I have to do is hit that red subscribe button, little notification bell next to it as well to stay up to date. Thanks for listening. AW Double or Nothing now on the road uh, to the return for live fans. We'll see if we get uh, Fighter Fest, Fight for the Fall in the summer as we've done, had uh, the past few years as well. Uh, and then All Out will be Labor Day weekend, Sunday, September the 5th. But, um, yeah, Inner Circle defeating the Pinnacle, Chris Jericho over MJF and company in this year's Stadium Stampede match.